Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We are live. We are live on LinkedIn. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, just to, we will start shortly in three, four minutes. Uh, just at the start, if you can just tell us if you can see us well. Uh, I'm glad to uh, have with me my guests today. We have Adi and we have Norbert. Hello, guys. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So I can hear you guys. So if we have already 15 people live, so if we can just uh, put a comment, if you are watching that on LinkedIn or on the YouTube, so just put a comment that you can hear us uh, well. Uh, today, we are going to have also uh, Oasis and GSA staff uh, with us. They are going to uh, put some, answer all of your comments. So we have Naive, hello, yep, loud and clear, looking forward to it. So we have all staff from the Oasis that to answer your question. So today's session will be about answer all of your question. How are you doing, guys? Where are you based right now? All good. Adi, do you want to go yeah. first? Where, where are you now? I am actually in Leeds in the UK. And mm -hmm. it's a, sort of a sunny afternoon here, which is quite nice to get nice for a change. How about you, yeah. Norbert? That, that, that's somewhat un, uh, un, uncommon in the UK to have a sunny weather. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm near London. So I'm in a little place called South End on Sea. Um, as, as it says, there is sea. Unfortunately, I can't see it, but uh, I can see that the sun is coming out. So yeah, great, great start to today. And you both are working in the Oasis. So Oasis is a company that produces software. It's a, is it correct? Yes. So um, actually, while we're, we're on it, um, I'll give you a little bit of a, a heads up. Um, Oasis actually stands for Over Arab Systems. Um, so we're part of Arab and we're Arab's in-house uh, software developer. And um, yeah, we provide, we develop a software of all sorts. Um, we provide digital solutions for structural engineers, geotechnical engineers, and for uh, pedestrian simulation as well. And what GSA stands for? So GSA, GSA stands for General Structural Analysis. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and as, I, as far as I know, you have, uh, you have developed a Grasshopper connection to the GSA, uh, Adi. Uh, you were one of them who were developing. And when everything started? Yeah, so it started before I joined OSS, actually. So it goes before my time. I joined mm -hmm. when it was, it had taken a basic shape, but then to really build it together and uh, and I joined us I mean I was mostly doing the product management work for it so it's not an active developer but mostly planning and strategy and that kind of stuff and it started quite about five six years ago as oh. uh, like as as almost a hobby project but it eventually became like uh, it got traction and it found a very good use case and then it eventually became a full-fledged OSS product so, uh, and now this plugin is for free, like just a Grasshopper plugin. You can yeah. download it from Food for yes. Rhino or? Yeah, so you need uh, the GSA license for it. It works with, you need to have a GSA license. And then you mm -hmm. can just get it from Package Manager within Rhino. So if you cool. go, if you open Package Manager and search for GSA, you should get the plugin there. I mean, you can still download it, but you'll not be able to use it if you don't have uh, yeah. GSA license for software. Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, we have on the we have on the chat. If you are watching that on YouTube, we have a question for you. Have you used Oasis before? One of the software, maybe GSA. Uh, I know that you have cool softwares for the geotechnical, right? How is it called? Yeah. Yes, we we actually just released a, a brand new software, um, our second cloud-based uh, geotechnical software called Giraffe. Um, the other mm -hmm. one is uh, Gopher. So Gopher is for 2D um, FA analysis, whereas Giraffe is for uh, geotechnical uh, graphing. Um, it's it's with a uh, partnership with Sequent. Very yeah, exciting cool. things going on there. Yeah, so if everyone, a, anyone is uh, using some of the software from Oasis, just uh, make a vote. So we would like to see how many of you are using it uh, already. So it will help. Uh, we are start uh, already. It's already 2, uh, 2 p.m. So let's, uh, let's start it. Uh, uh, as always, we are live on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. So if you can just leave a like. Uh, so it will really help to reach more people uh, to see 
uh, about more grasshopper uh, connections. Uh, so today's session it's about it will be about uh, one hour. Uh, session time will be forty minutes for with the, uh, lots of practical examples. Uh, afterwards will be Q and A uh, session. Uh, we have Adi and Norbert to answer questions, but we have also lots of stuff uh, on the chat from the Oasis. Uh, so if you ha will have any more questions, so we will be more than happy to answer all of that. And there will already some question uh, recordings will be available uh, to watch uh, later. Uh, everyone still can register at learngrasshopper.com slash webinar oasis uh, or scan this code. So everything will be sent to the email tomorrow. And together with the GH files uh, that Adi prepared for us, some roof structure, if I remember correctly, and even, even more files will be shared. So you can do your homework and test it by yourself. And of course, presentation that we are going to uh, show uh, today. And uh, I will also repeat that, write your question in the comments. We are here to uh, answer the question. Maybe you have something you are already working with Grasshopper and GSA, or maybe you would like to start and you are uh, wondering what, where, where to start. So we are here to help you. Uh, cool. Uh, so three benefits from joining this webinar uh, today. So first one, uh, of course, we would like to um, speak about Oasis and how we can use it for structure uh, analysis. Uh, we are going to see real projects, uh, examples, uh, really cool projects that actually will show you the power of Grasshopper in the, in the practice. And at the end, uh, all, all subscribers will get all the files to work after this webinar. So it's not just showing off uh, how amazing this software is, but also uh, showing the practical, practical approach. A little bit about me, just two words. Uh, my name is Krzysztof Wojsław. You can call me Chris. Uh, I'm a founder of LearnGrasshopper.com platform to teach uh, engineers how to start with parametric design. Uh, I've been working 12, uh, 10 years as a a bridge designer, but now I'm 100% focused on teaching other Grasshopper, Python, and C Sharp, and start uh, working in the more fun way. Maybe start automating some uh, some work. Uh, I'm also academic lecturer at the Norwegian University and also at uh, Global Master Program at Ziggurat. But it's all about me uh, today. I have really great guests, uh, Norbert uh, Kovacs. Kovac and Adi Tivari. Uh, so welcome you again, uh, guys. Uh, so yeah, we can start a little bit about maybe, uh, I see, I will just check the uh, poll, how many people, uh, it's about 50%, 52% actually people answered that they've been using uh, Oasis software. So we have like a partial, so maybe we can start a little bit what is actually GSA software. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, just a, very excited to be presenting here. I can uh, shout out to Chris for putting together Learning Grasshopper in the first place. I mean, I can totally imagine a few years ago when I was starting off, uh, it would have been very, this is the kind of platform I would have needed. So yeah, very happy to get a chance to contribute here. Cool. And to start with, uh, with today's session, let's just take a quick few what's about what GSA is. As Norbert point, this is general structural analysis, but it's actually an integrated structural analysis and design software. And here, are, here's what our customers say about it. Like we nimble and lightweight with GSA, or that GSA is versatile to be able to do with easy as well as complex project situations. And I'll run you through some of the quick highlights about GSA before getting into GSA Grasshopper. And mm -hmm. I hope these concepts will translate well to the grasshopper working as well. But the first thing about GSA is that we have this concept of a design layer and an analysis layer in GSA. Design layer is where you model the physical structure, like beams, columns, labs, etc. And in, a, in analysis layer is where you get the finite elements, basically. So the general workflow is that you model the physical structure in design layer, and then your the analysis layer is created where all the finite elements are available. But the point mm -hmm. is that if there is some errors or some or some challenging meshing which you have to take care of manually, you can do that in the analysis layer and directly access it. 
So there's complete transparency between what is the physical structure modeled, how it's broken down into finite elements, and how can you start to tweak the fine-tuned bits of it in the analysis layer. So you can um, model all the beam types of the plates, all the meshes, like yes, this. Yes, everything yes. was connected with the finite element methodology. Yes, yes, exactly. But also separate out the physical structure from the analysis model so that you are kind of clear about, OK, because you kind of make some assumptions about, OK, this is my column, this is my beam, and this is how I want them to behave together in terms of releases, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those physical things you model in design layer, and then you can fine tune some things if you want within the individual finite elements mm -hmm. so that you're really sure about what you're doing with the analysis model. This idea is to give a fine grain control to the to the user of the FE model. Mm -hmm. And then similarly, this once you've created the model, when you're loading the model as well, you get this flexibility. You can simply start putting loads in the design layer on members so that all the finite elements which create the member are automatically loaded. Or if you want to start loading in, like you want to load a patch of it or if, uh, have a special patch loading on just a part of the member, you can directly do it in analysis layer. As you see here, that you just want to load one element and not the total member, or you just mm -hmm. want to quickly. So you have that flexibility. This extends to 2D entities as well. You can load the entire entity, load patches, or just use tributary area based load panel distributions, all of mm -hmm. that is possible. And once you've created the model, applied the loads, you get a range of powerful analysis options, static, static V delta, nonlinear, or even going all the way to form finding or nonlinear analysis. You have a range of analysis options going from easy to complex to cater to a wide, a wide range of use cases you might have in your project. I'm a bridge designer, so I'm happy to see bridge load optimization here. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's been the number of load combinations can be crazy in when yeah. doing bridge loads. So this was exactly made for that to help you efficiently create the load combinations in the first place while, mm -hmm. while doing a bridge load, while doing bridges. And then once you've done the analysis, you want to view the results. So here, of course, all the familiar diagrams between bending moment, shear forces, etc., are all created. But you can also start superimposing the diagrams if you like to get to see the bending moment and the shear together so that you want to have a holistic view of how the structure is behaving. Superimpose the total entity with different kinds of diagrams. All of that is possible. Again, to give you a range of different options for different cases where you might want to view the results in different ways. And once you've done this, now you want to design. So we have a concrete designer, which is primarily aimed at 2D entities. So you can design any kind of shear walls, foundations, slabs, or even some complex shapes like you see here in this project. Uh, so we have quite a versatile concrete designer to take care of different kind of such entities. And similarly, we have a steel designer, where, mm -hmm. which was used in projects like these, for example. You get complete detailed steel calcs, which are created from GSF, so that you can set the main design parameters, run the design, but then review the design work in the reports to be very confident that the results of analysis and design are clear. So yeah, that was a quick overview of GSA. I am now let's get to the topic at hand, which is GSA Grasshopper. So a quick word, what is GSA Grasshopper? Well. It's one of the first kinds of plugins which takes the solver of a professional FE software, which is GSA, and brings it into Grasshopper. So to be so as you see here that you see the results live in real time, basically because the solver is in Grasshopper. So you have run the analysis here, you get the results in different forms. Mm -hmm. You can view the contours. As you see here, you can change the building and you see the results. So and this is the GSA solver, which is being highlighted. And it's because okay, so of this. On the left, so, so on the left, yeah. we, we are seeing Rhino, right? Uh, we are not yes. seeing GSA. So we, yes. we are seeing just Rhino preview. That's the Rhino mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the benefit becomes that you're able to, because now the solver is inside Grasshopper, so running things like Galapagos integrations or or if you want to integrate with Kangaroo or any other thing, you can do that in real time because the solver is inside Grasshopper and you're not linking externally with other software to have some, uh, maybe some challenging workflows. 
It's everything in here. And that is the key benefit. And here is a quick example of how you see uh, Galapagos based optimization, trying to find the right, pl right place to put the support, which is the center point, if you want to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and lastly, we also have a very good interoperability between GSA Grasshopper and the main software GSA. So if you have an existing file, you can just open it with a single click, as we see here. And we'll be diving more into this as I show it to you live, but to get uh, highlights, you can take existing GSA files, open it with a single click in Grasshopper, start editing them as you're seeing it here, then save them as a new GSA file, open them back in the main software. So there's a clean way to go back and forth between GSA and GSA Grasshopper. Uh, and... One question. One question. So it's transforming automatically all the beams and columns into Grasshopper curves. Yes. Okay, so everything and the nodes is just in the in the point. So you have just points and curves. What about like yes. more complex elements like meshes or B wraps? Uh, yes, like, so surfaces. Two D members yeah. becomes breps. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the mesh is yeah. Let's I'll dive into it and show it to you live. Maybe sure. And that's maybe the best way to right. So let's go live to GSA Grasshopper. I hope you can still see my screen mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah, we can see so, Ryan, uh, both Ryan and Grasshopper. Yes. So here is, yeah, the plugin is here, GSA. Quickly, quick note on how to get the plugin. You just go to Package Manager, and here you can search for GSA. And eventually, it kind of depends on your internet speed also sometimes that you just get to see the GSA plugin here. but. That is how, yeah, that's how you get the mm -hmm. plugin. And you can find and there the, the latest version of the GSA the collection. The latest version, yes, yeah. yeah. And so here we are, this is the GSA plugin. I very quickly show it to you in full screen. This is a GSA plugin, shows up like that, the same GSA. And the plugin is organized as you go from left to right like you have your models, your properties, your geometry, loads, etc. So generally, it's organized from left to right in some way that you might want to start putting together a model to an analysis, get results. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so let's start with the one-way street like we create from scratch in Grasshopper, create an analysis model, and then go to GSA. Let's start with this route. and. So to get into the plugin, well, just like any, just like any FE software, right? Like you need these basic building blocks. Is you need geometry, you need materials and cross sections, you need loads, and you need supports. All of them come together in a solver, and you also specify your load cases and combination cases, and all of these come together in a solver from which you extract results in both graphical formats and data mm -hmm. formats. So that's the the high level workflow. And as you can already see, it's the GSS solver. This is the GSS solver inside Grasshopper. It's run, running the analysis live. So mm -hmm. I can just, well, start changing my structure. Maybe I can, here's a legend of results. I, You can let me know if it's big enough. If not, we can quickly to scale the legend, so hopefully I hope that's so now, better. So, so now yeah. you are creating all the geometry of all the supports, everything from Grasshopper, from everything scratch. Everything in from Grasshopper, scratch. from scratch, mm -hmm. yes. And as you can see here, I am running the analysis live. As you see, the results change with the, you get more deflections as you increase the length of the beams. So it's really, and I like to think it's quite a fast solver. As you mm -hmm. see, it's quite, it's working with the slider, literally. And so if you can, if, if we can explain one more time, because I can see that free, mm -hmm. already free, we have already free question. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we need to GSA installed to use the plugin? Um, yes. So GSA, you need to have GSA installed. So you'll be able to download with package manager the plugin, mm -hmm. but if you don't have GSA installed, the solver won't run basically. So yeah, you need GSA installed to be able to run the solver. And the same, and the same with the license, right? Yes, you I mean, to... if you have GSA, you have a GSA license. That's that's kind of mm -hmm. what I mean. That you need GSA a license, and that's how it would, yeah, it would automatically pick up and. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, because yeah. because I, I, I just one thing I need to add that is not that common that you can run all the analysis inside Rhino and Grasshopper. So usually you do all the magic in Grasshopper. You send this geometry into software for analysis. You make you use the solver there, and then you transport the geometry. But here I can see that you can do everything in Rhino and uh, Grasshopper. Yes. In, uh, instead of going back and forth, you can just do it in a Grasshopper. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we put in a lot of detailing about how much you can do in Grasshopper. So I'm really mm -hmm. let's dive into it now. Like let's say the first step when we are creating the materials and cross sections, right? So just to show you the different kind of will you start in the left of the plugin, you want to create a profile, and that's this component. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of different cross section shapes which you can access. These are all GSA shapes which which are ready to go here in GSA Grasshopper as well. Also, if you have like a complex bridge cross section or something which you don't have a easily defined uh, template for, you can just draw it in Rhino and you mm -hmm. can use the parameter type and that becomes and just set the curve to that and that becomes the cross section input. So it's also possible. Yeah. And it also, automatically and it it will automatically connect uh, co calculate all the inertia moments and, and moment areas, inertia yeah. areas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. You just plug in the perimeter, the close shape, and everything is done. Yeah, yeah. Similarly, the catalog of sections, like if you're working in buildings and you have working in different parts of the world, so you have the entire catalog of steel sections from across the world available, right? Like. It's just a matter of four drop downs, and you have the cross section you need basically. Mm -hmm. So it's all packed in the plugin, ready just to use off the shelf. And similarly for materials, if we see we have a range of standard materials like steel, concrete, aluminium, etc., as well as different design codes from across the world where you might want where you're working in, and you get the standard grades available just ready to use ready to go mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and also if you want to create a custom material with your own that's also possible if you would like to but yeah you also have so you have the flexibility to create standard or custom materials so yeah that's that the profile and the material come together to make a beam section mm -hmm. and then this beam section is applied to the geometry so let's talk a bit about the geometry now i'll maybe switch off the results here just so that we can focus on the geometry. The geometry is creating structural members. And here, well, you take the beam section, which we just created, but we also need a uh, geometry itself. So the strength here becomes the curves that I've just taken these six curves and directly plugged them in to create structural members. I did not have to break them down into individual bits to take care of the intersections myself. The solver does it for me. And this goes back to the idea of GSA design and analysis layer that we are modeling in the design layer. We just model the structure, the individual intersections between the finite elements, et cetera, are taken care of for us. So as you can see, I just take in six curves here. I'm not breaking down, there's no cheating mm -hmm. here. <laughs> that. I'm breaking down intersections, etc. No, it's just created like that. And you also have quick options to like create releases, etc., which you can see here. They show up with these marks. So, so actually, it was question from Alan. How would you come about setting constraints in Grasshopper? So this is the answer. Yeah, like right? this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> this. <laughs> so. Uh, but but parts. here you are changing for constraints for uh, because you connected all the curves, so all the curves yes. will have the same all constraint. Right, but yeah. but you yes. can you can just copy that and create different separate constraints. them out if you have to. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can also while you're at it, just preview the three D section just to make sure that if it's been set up correctly, you can also play around with if you want to change the insertion point the top, top left, or centroid, and just check the 3D section to see that the modeling is correct, basically. So we have that option as well, with just right clicks. And yeah, so that's on the geometry and creating members. Similarly, for creating supports, it's quite the same. Just take the nodes mm -hmm. and apply these checkboxes. You get a visual feedback on, yeah, that's a fixed support, that's a pin support. Or if you have custom 
releases, you mm -hmm. just get the full things. So that's and as an input is as an input is just a point, right? Yes, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's taking six points for these six endpoints, basically, mm -hmm. as you see. And they are the six supports. And yeah. And then comes to so we have created the members, we created the profile section supports. Now come let's come to the loads. So again, I mean I switch on the results again. I've applied the loads to the six curves here. So again, the idea of design and analysis layer that I can change the structure and I'm not changing the individual places where I've, I've applied the loads to, right? The individual finite mm -hmm. elements update in real time and the loads are applied to them because I just directly apply loads to the design layer. And well, when it comes to the different types of loads I can use, uh, I have this 1D I've used a 1D member here, so I can have I've used a uniform load, but I can do linear, trilinear, patch loads, etc. And the units which I'm working with are also usually available mm -hmm. or at all the relevant places, so that you know there's always that little uncertainty about I might have made a mistake in units somewhere. So we like to keep it exposed at all the relevant places, like by loads. Also, while you're setting your cross sections here, you have the units available so that, mm -hmm. yeah. And do you have any do you have any limitation in loads, like any particular roads that cannot be still applied through Grasshopper? Um... Not really. Like we have node loads, beam loads, two D loads, thermal loads, mm -hmm. and we have these grid area loads, which are used for applying. Cool. Like if you have a big flow and you just want to apply loads to a certain patch, etc. So all of that many different ways of going it. So we like to think that we have covered 90% of the cases you would want to need. Mm -hmm. But if you have some more that you have a tunnel where you want to apply a triangular load, et cetera, so at the, on, the, on the walls of the tunnel. So that could be either possible with face loads, but there are some more advanced options in GSA main software, which you can work in tandem with if you want to. So that's another workflow that gets possible as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's for the loads. And let's quickly look at, now that we've created the loads, we want to go create uh, combination cases. So it's, I've created two loads here first, L1 and L2, just two different gravity loads. And, but to show you that in fact, once you have L1 and L2, uh, you can create uh, combination cases and they can be as many as you like and combine them in so i've just taken some dummy uls and sls cases but i hope this gives you the idea that you can just simply start writing down your combination cases as just a text and just enter it in and they're all just ready to so you will not have to worry about like which what's the id of which and that you don't have to set up any complex data structures to set up combination cases basically the workflow mm -hmm. is clean that just have L1, L2, L3 and just write in, in a text, what's the combination case and that works. Yeah. And yeah, so that's everything. And then it all comes together in the solver here. And so that's the geometry, the loads, the combination cases. And here you can set the units as well. It's the units of the geometry, about which the global model is in meters, millimeters or whatever. And yeah, so, the main so we are not sending. So we are not sending any data to uh, to any software. No. We are just analyzing everything. Just here analyzing in right here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then the result of the analysis is a GSA model, also because that's the analyzed GSA model. And from here, you can now start digging out the results. That this is analyzed model ready. First, you can choose the either unit load cases a1 or a2 where you want to see the results or you have your combination cases we created mm -hmm. four of them so there are four of them available here you can choose what you want to view the results for here and then we get to the different kind of diagrams we can display so already the one i've been using so far is deflected mm -hmm. shapes and contours so you can see i can scale my deformed shape I can also see, I mean, the different force and moment results. Actual force was not there in this model. That's why you don't see it. It's mm -hmm. a simple, but the shear force and some torsion in there. So that's 
the way to visualize it with like contours. You have more advanced results as well, like for footfall, steel design, or mm -hmm. strain energy and stresses if you're using some energy-based optimizations. So all of that is available here. So this is one kind of graphics, but you can also, if you want to investigate the model just to see the applied loads, that also you can do for the different load cases and combination cases. You can, in fact, also just display the value of the loads also, if you just want to be sure that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's everything is there. Yeah, so this is, you can imagine that if you're review, if you are getting your model reviewed with someone else and you just want to quickly show that you have applied the loads correctly, you can just switch on the annotations and see that the loads are correct and uh, things like that, I guess. It was and, a question about, uh, from uh, Chandra. Uh, so we yeah. can display, see the model results in Rhino. Yeah, so every yes. single, yeah. uh, as you can see, loads, displacement, everything is, yes. even though if you can just show this another component, so you can see also agenda uh, on the right top, uh, the the previous one, if you can just uh, see, show again, this the, yeah, this one. Yeah, this so one, on the yeah. right, on the right top, you can see also agenda with the colors. Oh, the legend, the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Is there any way to change this agenda uh, or oh, to yeah, display? Sure. Yeah, if you want to scale it, you can scale it. Yeah. I mean, you can scale it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think, yeah. And another kind of result is also the diagrams, just because if you want to see the classic bedding moment shear force diagrams, that also you can. And this also you can switch on the annotations for to just see the numbers if you like at the critical places so yeah it's as i hope i've convinced you it's a complete analysis within mm -hmm. grasshopper and maybe as a bonus there's also that if you want to see the deflected shape with 3d cross sections and that also you can see as here as a mm -hmm. little bonus and lastly so that was graphical results, but you also have result in data format available just to use, so bending moments, etc. You can also change the units of the results. Like if you're working in the US, you're probably working with pound feet, etc. That you can change here in real time. So yeah, that was a quick tour of the of how you go from analysis or uh, create. Uh, are you setting up basically the geometry? setting up everything to do an analysis. And the last step of it all is like, let's say you have done everything and now you mm -hmm. just want to take it to GSA. So you just have this save model button. You just click save, or you can save as, and you just set the location where you want to save it. Let's click, click save and click open in GSA. And that's where it then just opens the main software and the entire model which you had created in Grasshopper is available for you, mm -hmm. as you see, with the supports, with the cross sections, with all the combination cases, and all the results. So as you can see, this is the reflected shape here. So this everything is just available with one click, basically. And uh, we have a question yes. from Francesca: uh, mm -hmm. How do you check member element ID uh, when pushed to GSA order to then manipulate section size of just that member? Uh, so, I mean, you can annotate, you have different mm -hmm. options. First thing, okay, let's go it the right way. The first thing, when we were creating a member, we also, I did not show you this, but I just showed you the simple create member, but we also have this thing called edit, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, edit 1D member, where you have much more options to set, right? So if I want to override the ID, I want mm -hmm. to change the group number, change the end of sets, et cetera, et cetera, that I can all do here. So that, because usually there's a lot that goes on to create a member, but we didn't want to overcomplicate the main component. So, the yeah. key... so basically, basically speaking, you can take GSA model into Grasshopper and uh, mm -hmm. make maybe just uh, just the adjustment for the number ID and just send it yeah. the new model again. Yes, yeah. That's cool. actually one of my, I don't know if you've seen my script, Chris. That's a demo <laughs> file I want to show. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway, so that's here is where you can set the ID, et cetera. Yeah. The short cool. answer. And uh, yeah. So, right. I want to quickly show you some 
before we see yeah. the other end of the round trip of how we take an existing model in GSA, I want to quickly show you something which I find quite cool about the meshing possibilities. So while creating a mesh, right, you can, the analysis and design layer again, you can, if you create something in design layer, the mesh is an analysis layer created automatically for you. So that's what you see here that I created in design layer a member. But if I have more things, like if I have intersections in the member, all the intersections are solved in real time, as you can see here, all the extra points which I added just get meshed out. If I have an intersection between 1D and 2D elements, as you see, mm -hmm. it meshes and it updates everything. I can also really go parametric if you, if I have well stuff like that, and it updates the mesh to create all the intersections. And lastly, if I just want to really push it far and make this intersection, it again intersects also mm -hmm. between all yeah. kinds of curves, points, crazy curves, etc. So all the meshing is quite fast, and this is also available for you. Uh, uh, in fact, you can also create the mesh shapes here if you want to change between triangular meshes, mixed meshes with quads and triangles, or just quad only meshes. It's all possible here. Yeah. Just one question. So, uh, one question yeah. here. If I will put the same geometry into GSA, I will get the same uh, results of the mesh. Is the same engine that yes, creates yes, the mesh? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So it's the GSA mesher, the SS solver, right? Available here. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's this. Now we can maybe start looking at the other end of the round trip. Like let's say I have an existing model. And so what I can do is let's say I have an existing GSA file. So I have this component here called open model, which I just get in here. I can click like that to open a file. And I can, well, let's try to go find a good file. Can go here, yeah. Right, this is a good file, I think. Let's say I open a file here. So, yeah, quickly opens the file, and now I want to start getting it in. So, first I can extract the model geometry. So it's just mm -hmm. this component here get some model geometry, and I click it here, and here I get the geometry. It's super, it's super quick. <laughs> I can say. Yes. Yeah, it's just one click, and it's already. And then it's already separated out all the like finite elements or structural members as you would like to see them. So it's all available. And these can like start being changed to grasshopper objects if you like. If this these are the 1D members. Okay, there are no 1D members in so maybe I take a depth and yeah. Oh, so these are elements. Oh, okay, my bad. Design elements. So yeah, these are all the elements which exist in the model, as you see here. And I made grasshopper lines out of them, and then I can use it to further edit something. And not just that, this is just extracting the geometry, but I can also extract the model properties, the different one D, the different beam properties, or the different shell properties, slab properties that can all be extracted just like that. I can also extract the loads and analysis cases in the model. So here are the different, uh, there's one analysis, static analysis task done here, which is extracted like that. If I want to extract the loads, you can get model loads. And you see the different, there are about 13 load cases from dead load live load, etc. So the existing model information you can start extracting and deconstructing within uh, within Grasshopper. I so think it shows want... really powerful power uh, power of Grasshopper that every everyone thinks about parametric design that you can create these crazy shapes and just put it. And some people say, okay, Chris, I, uh, we are just having a standard building. Uh, why why yeah. do we need Grasshopper? And here yeah. is the answer. Like you can just yes. small things that you are maybe hard to organize or maybe you can uh, get some uh, elements uh, for example like tony asked us 
uh, can the analysis input and results be exported to Excel? And of course, answer is, uh, of course, we, we can import everything from Excel and export and think uh, this is the, the biggest power, not just creating this crazy uh, buildings that, of course, it's cool, but not, uh, not everyone is designing the uh, airport in Beijing, right? So uh, here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, yeah. here can be a really useful, like, uh, yes. exporting to just Excel. Yes. So, yeah, the, the same open model can be used to open what we call a GWA file, which is usually a JSA file in Excel, basically. So you can use to just work with that. You know, and you can save a GWA file as well, which is mm -hmm. save it. So, yeah, that does. And a quick thing which I really like is we also have a thing to calculate the takedowns. Like, if you just want to know what is the total weight of the different beams, right? Like, if you have... Okay, and this is not the best model because it was just a flow model for it. I can maybe open a different model and I can show something here. Takes... So you would like to extract some data from the model, yes. like about slabs or? Yes, like mm -hmm. if I just open a different model and I just want to show you. So as you saw, it was quite quick to open the other model as well. And then now here, I just want a quick total weight of different things, right? So it tells me first, I, if I just want to see the total concrete quantity, it tells me that because I had two kinds of slabs here, so it separates out the data structure that slab mm -hmm. type one is this much kg, slab type two is that much kg. Steel, I believe, is none because this is a purely concrete building. But similarly, if you just want the total weight of there are six kinds of beams and columns here, and you just want to know the total length of different columns and different beams so that you can just quickly use to calculate quantities of different types. That's all. It's a little component to help your like day-to-day -day hand calculations, I think. So mm -hmm. that's and you can possible. collect and, and you can connect all the costs, right? For the concrete, exactly. for the formwork, and you see exactly. and you can see all the costs in Grasshopper. Cool. Yes, exactly. And maybe some embodied carbon parameters as well, if you want to optimize on that. So yeah, yeah, we can so, go to the next. Uh, we can go can go to the yeah. next example. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. I mean, I think it's more or less. I can quickly summarize for the rest of the stuff with slides. I think because I easily get carried away when I'm in in Grasshopper. So I think I can take the last few steps to show you quick things which are possible. You can do stuff like modal analysis if you want to check for buckling modes and get the different load factors and frequencies associated with vibration modes. That's possible. You can do flow vibration analysis if you just and you get the key thing out, which is the maximum R factor, which you can use for further optimizations. That's also possible with GSA Grasshopper. You, we had the steel design as well. So as you see here, before and after steel design, I changed the cross-section shapes. So the steel design and optimizer, mm -hmm. along with a detailed log of different results, which you might want to investigate. This is also possible. And lastly, we have AdSec Grasshopper, which is another OSS plugin specifically for analyzing concrete cross-sections or composite cross-sections. So if you just want to see the results of the different PM curves in 2D or 3D, etc. That's possible with that Grasshopper. And we had done a webinar last year or last last year now about how you can integrate different OSS Grasshopper plugins to create completely connected workflows to go from global models to section to local models and have a complete design and analysis within Grasshopper. So that's I will another post, webinar. I will post yeah. the the, uh, yeah. the link to the YouTube channel where you can see uh, this uh, this video. <laughs> Yes, yeah, and really, that's it. That was a quick. Oh, uh, last thing is we have a documentation website, uh, which mm -hmm. also we'll drop the link to. It gives you complete information on how to install the plugin, as well as gives you some quick tutorials on how to get started. So that information is also available. Yeah, and um... yeah, I think that ends this segment of the webinar for me. I'd like to go to a quick case study, if unless we want to do some questions now. Or... Yeah, we can. We can just have few. So Miguel uh, is with us. So uh, 
uh, he will shortly come uh, and you are going to show this IID case study, right? Yes. Uh, but before I... that, maybe we can just just few seconds about the previous uh, previous one. Um, Mirak, is it possible to make a loop to find optimized section with some limitation? So I think we are going to sh see that in the <laughs> case study, right? Uh, yes, I mean, people have seen my script, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yes. Let me see. We have some comments. Love the instant mesh generation. Uh, Please try it. Yeah. Good, uh, good work. Uh, let me see. Uh, is the development of the script separate from the main software? How is the script being QN? Uh, being QA? Uh, you mean quality, quality assurance? assurance? Yeah, quality assurance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Maybe. the short answer is that there's no live links. It's just mm -hmm. think of it like there's one solver and two different interfaces. You can either use the GSA main software or use GSA Grasshopper. The QA of the script, I mean, you get error messages if you have created any any mistakes so that mm -hmm. you get error results out from the software. But the script's QA itself is kind of a, also the, the person creating the script has to, <laughs> but yeah. We give yeah, you enough it, hints about where the mistakes could be with the error messaging. Yeah, I think it's just a thing uh, to understand how this uh, connection is working. That is a two separate uh, separate things. Okay, uh, time is running, so maybe we can go to this case study because case I think study. people are uh, asking about the optimization. So let's do yes. It. So let's see this case study. It was done by Miguel and Rahul from the London office of Arup. And we'll see a computational design workflow for design and optimization. So here, this was the project. It's located near the King's Cross station in central London. And if you've been to the King's Cross station, you would know mm -hmm. there are a lot of underground tunnels at that yes. site. So that was the challenge that how do you maintain the safety and serviceability of the tunnels while you're building on top on, on the site. So there's another view to show how the tunnels sit below the buildings. And well, in a usual case, you could have just used a rough foundation to evenly distribute the loads from the building to the soil, but mm -hmm. that would not be the optimal use in this case because the tunnels present tend to change the stresses in the soil. So you want to find, the question becomes, how do you find the right places to put the foundations on the site so mm -hmm. that you are not affecting the tunnels, but also making the most out of the soil? And that becomes the optimization question. Yeah. Everything is easy mm -hmm. when you have nothing underground, so it's quite yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so suddenly when you have like three lines going underneath and you are building on top of that, so there's lots of questions. So it's really useful case study. Yes. And and that's where uh so let's I'll I'll in the interest of time I like to keep it quick, but the quick highlights would be how you started in this case study, you start in GSA to just create a quick cross-section model and of the soil and of the site. So this is literally the site and the tunnels which you want to model and optimize. And we have used OSS PDISP, which is our geotechnical solver, to model this, uh, the soil spring stiffnesses so that you're more accurate. That o OSS PDISP can help you that if you take a soil strata, you want to find what is the spring stiffnesses associated with such strata, you can do that. And that's what was done here. And then you can just quickly check if the model is working in GSA main software and and just get it confirmed along with your team to make sure that the base model is right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the limits for the optimization are coming from the stress limits and deflection limits on the tunnels, which form like the, the limits or which form the constraints for the optimization. And that is already here and then the link becomes that you take this base model, open it in GSA Grasshopper, and then link it to Galapagos to try a lot of different places to put the loads on, right? Because that is the optimization, that once we find the right places and the right magnitude of the loads on the site above the tunnels, that is the optimization, right? Because that's and the, the Galapagos concept. and the Galapagos for those who are not familiar is a standard tool that is coming along Grasshopper for optimizations. It's a simple, yes. but it's working pretty well. Yes, yes, exactly. So, and then this is a quick workflow. Open the open the base model in GSA, get extract the results to extract stresses and deflections, and that becomes the first constraints for your 
optimizer uh, for your Galapagos. And then since you have the solver of GSA inside Grasshopper, you can then start running the live loops between GSA and Galapagos to optimize and try a different, try a lot of different options of where to place the to place the loads. And that's how you get the optimizations here. Yeah? So yeah, this is just to quickly repeat that the variables being changed are the position and the magnitude of the loads. And a quick note on Galapagos. I mean, I I would recommend you to just watch more of Learn Grasshopper. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> you will learn more of Galapagos. And the key thing is fitness criteria about how you define the fitness for the optimizations. In this case, it was informed by the deflection and stress limits. And that is the fitness criteria of our solutions. And as a quick view, uh, we'll share this PDF with you so that you can take it at your mm -hmm. own time and, and, and just understand the fitness criteria, how it was set up here. And finally, these are the results you get. As you see that you see the different patches of loads, which eventually were along with varying magnitude, which was eventually figured out together with GSN Galapagos to put to where as to, as to where to put the foundations. And you can see you get 39% more load which you can transfer to the soil than if you just had a raft. And that you maintain the deflection and the stress limits in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. So that was the end goal, right? And then once you have this optimized type of optimized solution, you can rationalize it to just put, to just create the foundation strips, etc., and place them in a way that's rational for the site. And then finally come back to OSS PDISP, which helps you to do more also complete uh, analysis of the soil because we have done all of this in GSA. The main, we also might want to check it again in a soil mm -hmm. geotechnical mm -hmm. software. And that's what we can do here, yeah. So yeah, that was a quick case study. I hope that was interesting. Hope that was helpful. I would, in fact, yeah, like Miguel optimization, is... it's always yes. uh, optimization case studies are always interested. We are shortly also will invite Miguel to maybe yes. answer answer some uh, question. I already see that lots of comments about the great presentation. Uh, we can also ask question. Uh, would you like yes. to? Uh, to trial uh, of GSA. So I will also, if you can just answer that question, uh, maybe some of you would like to test it. And shortly we'll go to Q&A session, just uh, two things before all the going to questions. Uh, so I would like to invite you for next uh, workshop that we are having in two weeks for those who are interested in modeling of the connections and components using Tecla. So in two weeks, uh, we are having a, a webinar and there was also lots of questions about the learning materials, right? Like I see already people asking about where to find the uh, GSA learning materials. So I will also copy the link to visit the GSA docs that you already yes. showed, uh, showed to us. So you can just go to this uh, website for the OAZ software. Uh, but also, if you are just new to Grasshopper, I have created a guide called Five Steps to Learn Grasshopper. You can just go to learngrasshopper.com and in the download, you can find a really five easy steps where to start because it's like a topic for engineers, like everything is new. So I'm showing step by step what to do uh, with wh when learning, where to start and what are the next uh, steps. All right, uh, so let's go to uh, so let's go to the Q and A session. Uh, I would like to welcome Miguel. Uh, hello, Miguel. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me well, Chris? Yes, I can yes. hear you. I will just uh, a little bit put your mic up. Yeah, I can hear you now pretty pretty well. So let's go to the Q and A uh, Q and A session. Uh, we have some questions. Maybe we can start as Miguel. We have here uh, you. So great presentation. Uh, how can we link uh, this with geometry topology optimization? Have you try ever tried the optimization of topology? So no, if, if this, I'll pass the word to Adi, think so he can chip in as well. So for this, it was just a matter of like optimization, and so we can if we define the variables, as in for example, if you were to optimize a floor. You can de define as a parameter where are the sliders and you test many positions of like what is, so you need to define your structures like as a parameter that you can then vary. Another way could be so that would be like for geometry optimization, topology mm -hmm. as well. So like you just investigate, you use same procedure using Galapagos and GSA, 
and just defining your sliders, say the number of beans that you have in the floor, the spacing, the deck. You can play with many other things. From a topology optimization, it could be the same in a way, but what you could do, you can create the key using GSA cross or you can get the strain, strain energy of the every different element and create a loop there where you can say, okay, depending on the strain energy, I can remove using the simplified sequential search algorithm or something similar, which is used for damper placement, for example. What do you say? I'm going to remove the ones that have less stress. I'm going to increase the section of the ones that sort of remove the ones that have less stress, increase the section of the, of the more stressed ones. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. could do something as a workaround, yet still using, say, a commercial financial element software rather than using pure, really research ones. But I'm not sure if Adita has any more ideas. No, I think this. Miguel already answered the core of the answers. Thank you. I would only compliment that if you're in topology optimizations, you might want to work with 3D elements as well uh, if you are going in that direction. So that's also possible with GSI Grasshopper. But everything else that Miguel said that you use strain energy formulations, which you have results available for, that can be useful building blocks to build a more complete topology optimization routine. Cool. Uh, we have lots of questions about the license. So we have uh, the Norbert with us. Hello, Norbert. You are with I us. I like the question. It's like, how much is it? <laughs> so maybe, so if maybe someone's we are curious not... about it, then there you go. Um, yes. So that's actually a very difficult question for, for me to answer because we have various packages of GSA. So it depends on what your requirements are. Um, we have GSA analysis, which is for general. Um, we, we say general simple structures. Then we have general, uh, GSA building, which is uh, including the, the design as well as the uh, fit, uh, fitful analysis. Then we have GSA uh, bridge, which includes bridge related um, features. And then the suite, which also adds in the fabric analysis. So in for that question, I would say I can reach out to you and we can discuss it in more detail because I wouldn't want to go over 15 different pricing mm -hmm. now. Cool. Okay. Uh, would you be able to code check uh, on the beam elements? Yes. So we have, I mean, maybe this is a topic for another webinar, but we have the steel designer where mm -hmm. you can just, uh, yes, so the steel designer, which was recently introduced, you set the design codes set the design materials and you get the steel design. Uh, at least you can optimize the cross sections as per the steel designer. And then, as you saw, you can just open the model in GSA main with one click, and the same model is available where you have even further detailed calcs available behind column sizing and beam sizing, mm -hmm. etc. So that would be the workflow. But in the GSA, we have both concrete and steel, right? Because mostly you showed steel, but yeah, so far concrete... we have we we're going one step at a time. Uh, we have recently yeah. introduced the steel designer. Concrete designer mm -hmm. is work in progress. If that's a big need for a requirement. Uh, projects reach out to us i mean uh, if there's more demand we'll basically push forward for developing it even faster but at the moment steel designers and gsa grasshopper concrete designer you just set the base model in gsa the grasshopper gsa grasshopper open it in gsa and then you have the concrete designer there yeah. cool uh, next question from laura hi laura uh, is there a way to annotate reaction forces yes yeah, I mean, you can see the vectors of the reaction forces as well. I, did I not show that? Uh, uh, I might have missed it. But yes, you can annotate to show the vectors of the reaction forces as well as their magnitude so that you can yeah. if you have visually a grasshopper, check. If you have grasshopper file open, so we can uh, you can share your screen and we can check it. And in the meantime, I will see also other questions. Uh, if you guys see other questions that, that we have an answer, so please just let me know. We have um, still there's, something. There's actually one that's related to the previous question regarding the price. Uh, the question is, um, are the licenses perpetual or not? Um, they are subscription. So we have one and three year subscriptions. OK. And that, um, and that includes the software as well as the technical support. Yeah. OK. And so if you have can... more questions, you can reach out Norbert directly on LinkedIn. Or where is the best place to find you, Norbert? Yes. So um, you can reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. Um, if uh, We will try to post my LinkedIn in here. But also, you can reach out at um, oasis at arab.com. So that's mm -hmm. our general um, email address. Yes. So. Uh, I can share my screen to show you yes, the reaction. I can, uh, we can yeah. come back to the previous comment. Just let me see. I will yeah, just show yes. it. Uh, so is there any way to annotate yeah. reaction forces? 
like that. So there's display reaction force diagrams, which is this component. And if you switch on the annotation, you see the value and you can even see the different components of the reaction. So this is a simple gravity load. So there's only FZ reaction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but you can also flip between different cases, combination okay. cases and see the results like that. So it helps to visually check, yeah, helps to collaborate with, like, you know, there tends to be a generation gap there. There are some more senior experienced engineers who have been working since before Grasshopper. And then there are some more of people in our side, in our age group who are working with Grasshopper. So this can help to bridge the gap with such quick tools to visualize the loads, reactions, etc., or just open it in main software and take it quickly there. So. Yeah. And basically, you can also bake it into Rhino and maybe export oh, yeah. to DVG, for example. If someone wants to have the yeah. DVG format to see all the colors or visualizations, it's also possible yeah. Possible here. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, thanks for sharing that screen. Uh, let me see. I will uh, come back. We have some still more question from Girish. A uh, composite uh, structure in the portion of plastic hinge formation and stress can be elongated. I, 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 I saw that you showed the composite, composite structure, like the profile that you can put all the uh, pro properties uh, for that one. Uh, but what about the plastic hinge formation? Do you have answer for that one? Maybe it's really specific. Uh, yeah, question. I mean, I'm not sure what the question is. Composite structures plastic hinge formation and can stress. I mean, struggling to read, but the short answer is sure, you can have some elastic plastic material curves defined in mm -hmm. the essay, which you can then use for further nonlinear analysis, if that's the question. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, if they're gearish, if it's, if you like to Please reach out elaborate to us, right? more, <laughs> yeah, elaborate yeah. more so you can just write. Uh, Norbert, we have more questions to you. Uh, oh, can yeah. students <laughs> download, download or use GSA for free. What about students? So we have specific packages for students, uh, which are at um, which are targeted for the universities themselves. So these uh, packages are at a very very high discount. So they're not completely free, but they are heavily discounted. So um, I would say a large portion of the universities in the UK are already using mm -hmm. uh, one or many of our software. That's a that's a great approach. Uh, we have still three minutes left, so I will take last questions and I will let you know, guys. Uh, from Chandra, uh, is there any option to animate the mode shape of a structure? Yes, I mean, uh, you animation happens in GSA main software, so but you can see the mode shapes within GSA Grasshopper. I think I had shown a quick slide to show how. Maybe if we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can just come back so uh, I can show your screen. Uh, just find yes. out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as you see here, I, yeah. So I'm just splitting through the different mode shapes here. So they're static, yes, but at least you can see the way they deform. And if you really want to see them vibrating, you just again save in GSA, open in GSA, and the animator is there. But I think. At least you can see the deflected form here along with the frequency. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so you can choose everything. If you can zoom, so we can choose every mode from the. Yes. So the different. The yes. Mm -hmm. so the different things are the different mode shapes, right? A1 is mode one, A2 is mode two, because I had set my modal analysis in that way that I want the first 10 unit load cases to represent the first 10 mode shapes. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, Miguel, uh, if you can elaborate, we have more questions for uh, to you. Can you offer any insights into how you found using the GSA Grasshopper plugin from the project? Uh, Adi talk the, this case study about the uh, optimization of the loads over the tunnels. So it was extremely helpful and way faster than I was expecting. I was like, it's simply like understanding more is because the GSA runs within Grasshopper. So it's not like you need to go to the software as could happen with other softwares, which you can connect from the software. So like in order to do optimization, it was a very, very fast process. And I was expecting it was going to require several computers over the whole week. It was just on the same day, we were able to do several iterations, we were change one parameter, see how it behaves. So it was actually quite good. And I'm already using it for another application, slightly more complicated one, for example. But 
it was really good, so I do recommend giving it a try. Yeah, we are also planning on Learn Grasshopper more webinars about generative design because this is one of the uh, examples of how to use uh, generative design then you are optimizing the solution what about the geotechnical software because you saw the examples here do you have any plans to also connect with grasshopper uh, your geotechnical software is it planned or do you already have maybe i mean i would let nobody talk about the new geotechnical software well <laughs> Um, we don't actually have a Grasshopper plugin for any of our geotechnical software just yet, because um, we haven't received a request for it. As as you might know, um, most of our software are actually user have a user led development. So what our users, our, our clients, want to see in the software, that's what we add. So currently, we have a list of requ uh, requests that we have received from the users, and those are the things that we are prioritizing prioritize size sorry <laughs> right now no and um, those those are going to be um, updated as we get more requ uh, requests so if there's interest in adding a plugin for um, grasshopper into any of our geotechnical software please do reach out to us um, we are interested in knowing more about your requirements yeah so now everyone heard that if we are going to write now 50 requests so they're going, <laughs> they're, going, they're to, go going to create that <laughs> yes exactly uh, okay uh, okay two two last questions uh, could the materials and cross section also be defined via text panels uh, or it should be just components always be used so text panels can be used to define the cross sections for sure mm -hmm. i mean should does it help if i share my screen again Right. Yeah, uh, we can go to your screen, right? Yes. So let's. If you can just take... make it a little bit bigger, like your grasshopper, so like sure, everyone yeah. can see that. Yeah. Great. So let's just take the catalog, and yeah, I mean, all of these, right? Uh, just, just text. As I see, I just put it in a text panel. Mm -hmm. So I could have, in fact. I could also be more clever if I just want certain cross sections here. You mm -hmm. filter them out here like that. Oh, oops, because I've forced the catalog to be uh, no. But if I select all, yeah, there mm -hmm. you go. It was not in the British catalog. But so yes, these are all text. You can use clever text filters, or you could just directly take write this text out and plug it in the profile here. And then it would understand that what's the profile you're talking about. So if you have something coming in from BIM via text format, you can just directly plug it in the profile input to create section. That also works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last question, let's uh, take this one as a, a last one, maybe to Miguel. Is there any way, from Laura again, uh, any way to get Grasshopper to choose the best steel section profile from a list of an options? Yes, I think it will be very simple. You just define a Galapagos component, for example, where you refer, you create a slider with the number of the sections, say from 1 to 100, and then the Galapagos is going to iterate those sections. You can extract the demand capacity ratio, deflections, anything that you may want to, and then you can like automatically say, okay, which one, what do you want to optimize? What is the key that governing this vibration, the strength, material, and the, that will be your fitness function. So based on that, you should be able to extract yes. what is the best one for your case. Yes, and if I can complement that, mm -hmm. if I share my screen again with the, we just last week, in fact, we have released uh, the next release of GSA Grasshopper has the steel optimizer inbuilt. As you see here, I, you see the sections cross change here. Mm -hmm. It's that I have before and after sort of a thing to show how the optimizer could change the cross sections. This was only released last week, so it's very, very new uh, that uh, there still might be some issues to fix in it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But so far, it's it's, it's working. The cross-section optimizer for steel sections has been introduced in GSA Grasshopper just last week. Yeah. Cool. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks that you uh, been here and get and share this uh, really practical examples uh, we see lots of good comments i love the instant match generation of gsa great thank you so much this was very useful uh, we have pulari with us so thank you again
Uh, I, we have links if you would like to go uh, to the website. So we share the uh, share the links and hope to see some of you on the next uh, Tecla workshop uh, for those who are more interested in the 3D uh, modeling. So that's all uh, for today. You would like to add something more, uh, Norbert? Um, no, just thank you for everyone for for coming to this webinar. And um, as as yes, as you mentioned, um, you can reach out to us with any of your questions. Um, just in case if we haven't managed to answer some of the questions, we can uh, reply to them in an email address. Um, I believe we will have those. So yes, we, we will make sure that all the questions are covered. Thank you. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adi. Thank you, Thank you, Miguel. So yeah, lots of comments here. Good work. I can I can see uh, right here. So thank you again and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye.